thank you very much, you guys, for having me as a guest speaker on Bruin Voices. My name is Joshua Stern, and um, I run the number one residential real estate team in the state of Utah. Um, I am also uh, an agent partner in the Keller Williams Market Centers here in Salt Lake. And uh, I also happen to be a leadership coach or a business coach for some of the top real estate teams in the country and in Canada. And I was asked to come here today to let you know a little bit about how I put this together by the time I was in my early 40s. And so um, the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is creating a personal mission. And we'll talk about how that fits into the science of success. And then we'll finish with the six paths to mastery. So I find a personal mission is most often something that we should build with the end in mind. It gives us a little bit of direction from point A to point Z. So I want to do a little exercise with you. I want you to guys uh, to imagine that the year is 2050 and you've been invited to an event in your honor. It's at the Grand Ballroom in the Grand America Hotel. And you enter the room and it is filled with people that you care deeply about. And these people care deeply about you. And they're there to celebrate you. You see, your mentors are going to be there. And one of them is actually going to be chosen to be the MC of the evening. And I want you to think for a moment about what these individuals are going to say. Right? We're going to have four guest speakers. And they're all going to be talking about you, your contributions and your accomplishments. Your family member is going to be there. What is it that they're going to say? Your best friend will be there. Your business partner or your coworker will be there. And finally, a community or a charity leader will be there. These people are celebrating you, your accomplishments, and your contributions. What they're actually talking about, you guys, is your purpose. It's, it is your life's mission, right? And your life's mission is kind of like a compass. It focuses in on three primary areas. Number one, what do you want to do? And then number two, who do you want to impact? And finally, how will the world be changed by the execution of this mission? So 15 years ago, I went to my very first real estate seminar. And the guy there said something that really struck a chord. He said, if you're willing to do what others won't for 10 years, you'll be doing what others wish they could be doing for the next 30. And so I imagined what was possible for 30 years and I simply had to get gritty for the next 10 years and, and, and get to business. I had no idea how I was going to make this happen. No clue. And so I want you to understand that having an imperfect mission is better than not having a mission at all. See, the mission is like the rocket fuel to your life, to your purpose. It's your why. It's what gets you out of bed in the morning. But not having a mission is a lot like grabbing your keys, getting into your car, taking a drive, and literally having no clue where it is that you're going to go. That sounds fun, right? <laughs> Some people like driving. I get it. Um, so if, if we have a mission, it's going to start showing very clearly certain things that are important for us in life. Number one, it's going to show clearly your vision. And the vision is how the world's going to look during and after your mission is complete, though I don't actually believe your mission is ever complete. Your, your um, vision or your mission will begin to show clearly your values. And these are your non-negotiables, the things that you value above all else. For me, to keep perspective, that was God, family, and then business. Your mission also begins to show clearly your beliefs. And these are your non-negotiables, the things that you believe to be absolutely true. And I believed that when you take care of other people's needs, that your own needs would be taken care of. And finally, your mission begins to show clearly your perspective. And this is how you view the world or your worldview. And for me, as my mission moved forward, I began to realize that my own success would be directly correlated to the amount of people that I helped become successful. So now that we have our compass pointed to true north, we have an idea of the direction that we're going, now we're going to focus in on the science of success and then the six paths to mastery. So the first path to mastery is actually self-mastery. It's a process of acquiring what I call cash with a K. And that is knowledge, attitude, skills, and habits that make you a relative master of you. And get gritty, folks, because this stuff does not happen overnight. And nor do I believe that you're just born with this talent. 
So how long does it take to actually master something anyway? According to Malcolm Gladwell, who was the author of The Outliers, did a lot of research on this, and he discovered it takes about 10,000 hours to master something. Well, that's five full-time years of work. So after five full-time years of doing something, you could actually look like talent too. I mean, isn't talent just an example of somebody who's been practicing their craft for some extended period of time, right? So the second path to mastery is in the implementation of the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule is also known as Pareto's principle. And Vilfredo Pareto was an Italian economist who in 1906 had discovered that 80% of the wealth that was held in Italy was held by 20% of the population. The 80-20 rule, Pareto's principle, right? So at some point in time, we're gonna have to realize that not everything matters equally. That we've gotta focus in our 20% on what matters most. And once we do that, we can trust that the 80% will come. I know in real estate, 80% of the homes are sold by 20% of the agents. Well, in any professional occupation, 80% of the results, the productivity, and the profitability will come from 20% of the efforts. So again, focusing in on the 20% and getting those done first will guarantee that the 80% shows up, our results. So, what you should realize is that success is sequential. It's not simultaneous. It doesn't just happen to you. It's a lot like a geometric progression in life, set up like a row of dominoes. And if we can focus our 20% on that first domino and knock it over, then we can trust that the rest will fall, right? It sounds simple, but it's not easy. Easy is being distracted and focusing in on urgent things that are cleverly disguised as important, okay? So when we focus our 20% on what matters most, eventually we're going to hit a ceiling of achievement. So the third path to mastery is moving from E to P, or moving from our entrepreneurial style to our purposeful style. So what is our entrepreneurial style anyway? It's our natural behaviors. It's the things that come naturally to us, right? It's our, our intuition, it's our ambition, it's our drive. It's just things that come naturally. And things that come naturally only get us so far before we hit a fundamental ceiling of achievement, right? You see this happen all the time in the work world, in the professional world. And these are people that come into, into work and they excel very quickly and then they quit quickly. Well, I fell into that camp too. I had 43 jobs before I got into real estate. You see, hitting the fundamental ceiling of achievement ultimately leads to disappointment, resignation, and greener pastures. And that cycle plays on and on. To break through that ceiling of achievement, we have to do something different. Perhaps we hire a trainer, a coach, a consultant. Maybe we go back to school and get an education, further our education. But we have to do something different. See, being purposeful is about doing what comes unnaturally. It focuses in on models, systems, strategy, and accountability to help us break through that fundamental ceiling of achievement. So once you've made a choice to become purposeful, then we have to move to remove limiting beliefs. Once we become purposeful, we have to have a learning-based mindset. So the fourth path to mastery is having a learning-based mindset. And what is a learning-based mindset? A learning-based individual is an individual who's made effective learning the foundation of their action plan. Effective learning the foundation of their action plan, right? Did you ever have that aha moment in school where you realized the more you learn, the less you actually knew? Um, or that moment where you're like, ah, I know what I know, but there's more to know. See, I like to think that if you're investing in education, training, coaching, or consulting, that you're planning on actually doing something with this newfound knowledge. Because knowing for knowing's sake leads to nowhere. But knowing for doing's sake leads to, on the outside, productivity. And for those people that appear to have obtained enlightenment are showing you what knowing for doing's sake looks like on the inside. And by the way, 
both lead to higher actualization. So like Nike said, just do it and realize that school is never out for the professional. Right? By choosing to make learning the foundation of our action plan, we begin to remove limiting beliefs and focus in on unlimiting beliefs. So the fifth path to mastery is removing limiting beliefs. What is a limiting belief? Well, a limiting belief is a false belief that we acquire by making an incorrect conclusion about something in life. Have you ever slowed down and listened to your thoughts? Because if you have, you're going to be shocked at how many limiting beliefs you actually have. You see, you're going to think that you're positive until you slow down and really analyze what it is you say when you talk to yourself. Does that make sense? You see, 95% of our 4,000 plus thoughts per day are actually pre-programmed. So what do you say when you talk to yourself? Because after all, you're the only one listening, right? So what role do you think beliefs play in success? Because to reach the highest levels of success will require removing limiting beliefs and focusing in on unlimiting beliefs. So I find it's easier to remove individual limiting beliefs than it is to always focus on unlimited thinking. What do I mean by this? Well, going back, if you remember, I went to a seminar and the guy said, if you're willing to do what others want for 10 years, you'll be doing what others wish you could be doing for the next 30. Sounded awesome. Um, but that meant that maybe I would be in retirement by the time I was in my early 40s. And that's weird because I don't know anybody that's actually done this. And so the reality is I was raised by my parents who were raised by their parents who were raised to go to school, get an education, get a job, work there for like 40 years, you know, and retire on a company pension. I'm not sure if those exist anymore, by the way. And Social Security, and that's questionable too, right? But I wanted to do this by the time I was in my early 40s. And understand to me, you guys, retirement meant that I get to wake up in the morning and do what I want to do, not what I have to do. But nobody in my family had done this. Nobody in my extended family had done this. And nobody in the circle of people that I knew had actually done this. So this was going to require removing a lot of limiting beliefs. And there was something I found about limiting beliefs. And that is when you argue for them, you get to keep them. So the sixth path to mastery is accountability. And please recognize the unavoidable connection between accountability and success. Because at some point in time, you're going to realize that what keeps you being a victim is that you don't want to change. And your unwillingness to change automatically makes you a victim. Accountable people, by definition, they want to change. They want to be better for themselves and for those people that are around them. So get real and realize that every time you point a finger, there are three that are pointing back at you. Accountable people own their reality. They acknowledge the reality. They want to change. Denial doesn't change anything at all. Accountable people are the first people to say, what do I have to do differently? And then they do it. Do you guys know the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results? Well, isn't that just a perpetual victim? See, accountable people, they, they're, they're the first to say, what do I have to do to be better? How do I fix this thing? And then they do it. Accountable people, they don't dwell on things. They just get on with it. They get clarity, they take action, and then they evaluate the results. Don't you just love people who own their mistakes? They move themselves forward much quicker, right? Thomas Edison once said, in order to get to the next level in life, will require a different perspective and a higher level of thinking than the perspective and level of thinking that got you where you are. So let's review the science of success and the six paths of mastery. The science of success, right? When I drop this pen, what force is at work? It's gravity isn't it? Yeah. Can we see gravity? No, we can't, but do we know it's there? Right. Air 
Can you see air? No, but you know it's there. Just like the science of success, these are the things that will move you forward. So number one, it is choosing to follow the path of self-mastery. Number two, it's focusing on the 20% that matters most. Number three, it's being purposeful with what matters. Number four, it's having a learning-based mindset. Number five, it's unlimited thinking. And number six, it's following the path of accountability. Thank you so much for having me as a guest speaker.